So we are back for part 7 of Let's Play Phantasmagoria. Uh, let's see if there's anything more we can get in this store. It's a nice bone. Well, I know of a certain hungry dog. Why don't we check out this sleazy guy? See that? I, I don't know what I'm doing here. There's nothing I need from you. Good. Okay, where were we? The crunchy crunchy we were doing. Look at these getaway sticks. Oh, I love that. You're beautiful. <laughs> Sleaze ball. Well, there's something wrong with that guy, right? Let's see if the antique store is open. Ho ho! Who say 18th or 19th century cameos? Unfortunately, I don't have any at this time, but I do have some very fine old jewelry if you'd care to. be on the lookout for any cameos of that description and you said you'd pay well all right I'll be sure to call you back if I find anything you're welcome goodbye hi hello See anything you like? Oh, I'm just looking, thanks. Take your time, dear. I'll be here if you have any questions. Okay, thanks. Nothing here. Uh, ma'am? Yes? Hi, I'm Adrian Delaney. I just moved here from Boston. Um, I was wondering if you could maybe you... tell me... Did you say your name was Adrian Delaney? You're not a writer, are you? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Oh, I just loved your mystery novel, Blue Moon Rising. I couldn't put it down for a week. Can I have your autograph? Yeah, sure. Oh, you thank you. What's your next book about? Oh, now you're going to have to wait for that to come out. Oh, fiddle, I was afraid you'd say that. Well, what can I do for you, Adrian? Well, I was hoping maybe you could tell me something about the area. 
Listen, I know everything that goes on around here. Like, I know you're the one who bought the old Carnivash estate. If you ever have any questions, I'm the one to ask. Great, I'll do just that. Thanks, uh, Luann. Only, uh, most folks call me Lou. Okay, thanks, Lou. Anytime. I have a question. Do you know anything about a very old man named Malcolm? Malcolm Wormshadow? <laughs> Do I ever. Talk about a strange old man. But I haven't seen him for months. Though Ethel does come into town to buy groceries. Who's Ethel? Well, she's Malcolm's nurse. And also companion and housekeeper and whatever else. Uh, he's very old, you know. Almost 110. 110? Is that possible? I told you, he's strange. It's almost like he's immortal or something. Most people in town avoid him. <laughs> They call him a witch. But I don't believe all their talk. Well, I'd like to speak to Malcolm. I understand he used to live in my house as a child. With Carno? That's true, he did. But I doubt if you can talk to him. He's like a hermit. Very private. I'd like to try. I have a lot to ask him. No wonder you're a good writer. You have a lot of natural inquisitiveness. Well, to find him, he lives about a mile out of town, down the dirt track, on the other side of the bridge. Okay. Thanks for the info. Sure. Is there anything else? I have a question. Oh, hello. Can I help you? I hate to bother you again, but... I'm very curious about the old Carnivash estate. Can you tell me about the place? That is an interesting place. How do you like living there? Um, I'm not sure yet. I think it's going to take a little getting used to. Well, I don't envy you. Now, why do you say that? You know, people act very strange when I tell them I bought the Carnivash estate. It's no wonder. It's rumored to be haunted. Do you believe in ghosts? Of course not. Why? The ghost of Carno supposedly haunts the place. It's not even supposed to be safe to live there. Well, has anybody ever been hurt? Or, God forbid, killed there? I don't remember any deaths, but plenty of injuries. Over the years, the people who owned the place used to bring workmen in to fix things up, but invariably some bizarre accident would occur. One man had his arm chopped off, another man tumbled down a flight of stairs and broke his neck. He was paralyzed for life. God, that's terrible. Maybe these men were just careless. Well, maybe that could be. Even so, you be careful, all right? Yeah, I, I will. Thanks. Sure. Anything else? Excuse me. Yes? I just have a simple question. Okay. Ask away. Well, I'm very curious. Has anybody at all lived in the Carnivash estate since Carno's death? I'm really not sure. The Templeton family bought the place about ten years after Carno's death. That would have been around, oh, 1910. There was talk of turning it into a museum. Electricity was added, but because of a rash of injuries and bizarre events, it never came about. What, has anybody at all lived in the house before us? I really don't think so. The Templetons never seemed to show any interest about the place. I think they were bothered by the reputation the estate had. Anyway, it just seemed to sit there and be handed down from father to son to grandson. That's very interesting. Thanks. No problem. Hi there. Hi. I'm 
very curious about Carnell. Wasn't he a world-renowned illusionist? He sure was. Carnell was in his prime in the 1880s and 90s. He traveled all over the world with an extravagant magic show. Uh, we probably wouldn't be very impressed by it today, but back then they sure were. But I've heard that his magic acts tend to be a bit on the darker side. Yes, I've had that impression. But do you know what he was like as a man? He was very secretive. I don't think anybody really knew Carno, not even his wives. That brings up another good question. Exactly how many wives did he have? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five. He was married five times, I think. All of them from the theater circuit, most of them were in his magic show. Why so many? What happened to them? Goodness, you are full of questions, aren't you? Well, let me see. Two or three of them died, and as for the others, uh, I don't know. One thing about Carno, though, that has never been proven or disproven. It is rumored he was into the black arts. Hmm. That's very interesting. Yes, isn't it? Well, thanks for your time. Sure, you're welcome. A lot of history. Excuse me, Lou. Oh, hello. Sorry to bother you again, but I was wondering, do you know if Carno had a child? Yes, he had a little girl, I think. Something happened to her, but I can't remember what. Why? Oh, that's okay. I was just wondering. All right. Have a nice day. Me too. According to the family tree we found in the hidden chapel, the child died when it was just two years old, I think. Excuse me, Lou. Hello, Adrian. Can I help you? Well, I've been thinking about Carno. Do you know how he died? I don't know the details, but one night, Carno and his wife Marie had a violent argument, after which they both lay dead. The police found them the next morning. That was in the late 1890s. Well, where's Carno now? I think he's buried in a tomb somewhere on your property, along with Marie. Now, that's a scary thought. Oh, he can't harm you now. Unless, of course, you believe in ghosts. Well, I don't. Carno's dead and gone. Of course, dear, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks, Lou. You're welcome. Don't mention it. Something else? Adrian, can I help you? Oh, no, thanks. Just looking around. Okay, let me know if you need me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's leave town then. Before we do anything, uh, let's go over here. This must be the house of Malcolm then, and his nurse. And now we have something for the dog. That's a good boy. Good dog. Nice doggy. So, can we meet Malcolm now? Uh, let's find out next, in, the, in the next part. Bye for now.